Hello learners, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm teacher Aden, who will be taking you through chemistry. The topic for today will be chapter one, form one, chapter one. That's introduction to chemistry. Kindly stay with us till the end of the video. Let me take this opportunity to welcome the form one students to secondary school uh, learners. In primary sense, you have studied a subject called sense but in secondary school that sense is uh, divided into three main subjects which are the first one chemistry biology and physics so the t topics covered in primary sense which are studied under chemistry because we are dealing with chemistry include matter and it is property another one is mixtures and it is method of separation you remember in form one we were having methods of separating mixtures like filtration, winnowing, decanting, sieving, those others. Then drugs and also pollutions. Those topics we have done it in primary sense, but we are going to do it also in secondary school chemistry. Okay, let's go and do a review on chemistry topics learned in the primary sense the first thing that we are going to go is matter so let's start with defining matter what is matter matter is anything that has mass and occupies its base so during the exam learners from one remember when you're in secondary school the exams they don't have uh, options so you will not have a option a option b option c like that so here you will be given the question you are supposed to answer it without you having an option. Okay, what's matter? Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Or you can say matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. You also get your answer right. Next, let's see. Matter exists in three states. Or during the exam, you can be told state the three states of matter. So these are solids. You have also seen that in the primary. Liquids and also gas. Gases, we can also say vapor. They are just one and the same. So let's get examples of solids. They include wood, glass, liquids. They include oil, water, uh, gases. Include maybe example, you can have hydrogen, nitrogen. You can have maybe oxygen and many others. So thereafter, learners, the three states of matter are interconvertible. That means if we have one state of matter we can convert it to another state of matter by just having or putting there a condition so during the exam or this thing you have seen it in primary even we were having even some processes there and we have their conditions like let me just try to to explain further if you are given now letters like you are told this is process a process b this is c this is d this is E and this is F. During the exam, you can be asked only two things. One, the teacher can ask you process. You can be told, name the process that take place in A, B, C, D, E, F, like that. Or the teacher can ask you conditions. So the teacher can tell you state or name the condition in process A, B, C, D, E, F. So let us start with conditions. When a teacher asks you conditions, you are supposed to respond only two things. You can say heat or you can say heating. If you don't want that, you say cool or cooling. Those are the only two conditions that you can give if the teacher asks you to write the condition that is required in process A or process B, C, D, E, F, like that. So let's start. For a solid to be converted in a liquid, this process A requires a condition, and that is we are supposed to heat. For example, if you are having an ice, if you are having an ice, that ice requires to be heated. So the condition there is we have to heat so that we get the liquid water or liquid ice liquid water so the condition there for this state of matter 
that is solid to be converted to a liquid which is uh, water requires now that condition called heat or heating so if we want to see b again the condition will be again heating like for example if you heat liquid water it converts to steam or water vapor whatever you know for so for you to convert this water which is a state of matter that's liquid to convert into a gas which is a steam in our case here requires a condition and that is heating or heat i hope you have gotten that so for me to take this steam back to a liquid what i can do is i can use a condition called cooling or i can cool when i take that steam and i cool i'm going to get liquid water if i try to cool that water vapor i mean liquid water it will go back to ice so the condition here again is cooling or cool so during the exam if the teacher asks you state the condition necessary or a condition for process a process c like that you say either heating or cooling conclude if you're having this ice then you want to convert directly to steam what you're supposed you are supposed to eat if you take from steam you go directly to the other side of ice you are supposed to cool okay let's go for the process this process you have flanted it in in from standard 7 8 there so in process a for this solid to be converted to a liquid it has it has to be melted so process there will be melting it will be melting so let's go for b b it's liquid you having a gas so we have to evaporate so the process is evaporation evaporation or evaporating whatever you like so if you want to take this gas then you want to convert back to a liquid you're supposed to condense that means you can say the process is condensation condensation then go for d you're having liquid you want to solidify it into a solid so the process can become now freezing as you have planted it in in primary sense or you can say solidification solid solidification so next learners let's go to e e is you are having you are having a solid then you are changing directly to a gas. That one you have done it in primary. That process is called sublimation. Sublimation. Remember, we have some substances that do sublime. One of them include iodine. Iodine is one of the substances that undergo sublimation. So F, F is from gas going back to a solid. I think in primary you have said it is sublimation. But in secondary here, that process is called deposition it's called deposition deposition so that states of matter we have seen it in primary we are told the three states of matter are interconvertible so from there learners let's just try to go to brubits of matter <clears throat> so we know the three states of matter are solid liquid and gas so during the exam you can be told state two brubits of a solid or two brubits of a gas or a liquid something like that so we're having here the properties these are mass and we are having here volume and we're having here shape so for solids they have definite shape definite volume definite mass those are the thing three things that they have so let me put it in a, a simpler way what you're supposed to do learners to do it simpler what you're supposed to know is you know the, the three states in this order that is solid liquid gas then the properties you know it in this order that is you start from mass volume and you end with ship so you go for solid solid all of them are definite now so that means solid they have definite mass definite volume and definite ship come to liquid in the liquid it will have the first two as definite then the last one to be indefinite that will be our fo formula that means in solid the three of them are definite 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 come to liquid two of them are definite the first two are definite then the last one is indefinite when you come to gas the first one is definite then the other two are indefinite 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 so what you're supposed to know is you know the state in this order then you know the states of matter in this order so it will be very easy for you to capture that so all of them you put definite mass solid definite volume which is solid again definite shape in the side of the solid when you come to liquid it has definite mass it's having definite volume, 
but it has indefinite shape or it has no shape okay you know this is liquid they just take the shape of the container but they don't have a definite shape so gas they have definite mass yes but they don't have definite uh, volume they have indefinite volume then come to uh, that side of shape they have indefinite shape so now you know the three states of matter next learners let's just try to go to the extended uh, questions you are supposed to attempt this question this question we have borrowed from the klb so just try to check very well and you try to uh, respond or give your answers on the comment section uh, i'm going to go through and let's just try to conclude so let's meet on our next class as we look on mixtures and it is methods of separating them thank you goodbye